So, once again, we are here to give you a free ramp. Uh, this time we are tackling, uh, I think we're gonna do a kicker. Uh, maybe it'll end up being a wedge. It kind of depends on what material that we come to, but the title that you read will obviously tell you which one of the two it is. I'm thinking it's gonna be a kicker. That's what we're gunning for. Uh, so right now we're off to uh, our favorite place to go snoop around for uh, wood and such, and that is Home Depot and or slash Lowe's. Uh, I think we're going to Home Depot specifically right now. Yeah, we'll go to Home Depot. That's the closest to us, um, and we use them often. And I just listened to the Home Depot founder's audiobook, and it kind of made me more of a fan. Really? Yeah, I like really back the Home Depot. Oh, nice. I, maybe I have to... Great ethos, that company. Is. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, uh, so if you're getting... Originally, uh, the two founders worked for a big corporation called Handy Dan. <laughs> and they went off and did their own... They got laid off or something. They started their own deal, um, and when it started, they hired a marketing company to come up with a name, and the one guy's name is Bernie, and that's one of the founders, and one of the names that the, the marketing company pitched him on was like Bernie's Bargain Barn or something. It, oh, was, God. it was horrendous. That sounds so good. I'd they, go there. They played around with all these other like Home Co, Home This, Home That, and they landed on the Home Depot. There you go. The more you know. If you notice something else different about today, besides the fact that I have gray hair on my sideburns, we are in a different vehicle. Uh, we are in a new van that you bought. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got a mean ass glare right there. Live with it. Oh, okay. How's that? Yeah, it's better. Uh, yeah, we're in the Dodge ProMaster 2500. It's going to be our. Wait, in... that's actually what it's called? Yeah, ProMaster is the model. That literally sounds so made up. It's, it's Continue. basically like Dodge's version of a Sprinter. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's tall top. You can stand up unless you're like six foot five and your head will hit. I can't stand. And then, uh, yeah, it's 12 foot long in the back. Uh, it's a cargo van. It's six cylinder. It's got little turbo kind of features, so it's zippy. We're moving up in the world. This thing is so sick. We're not trying to sell you on a van, but we are trying to uh, flex on you with this van because this van is so sick. <laughs> um, once the world goes back to normal and we can have events, it'll be kind of like the, the demo rig. Oh, you know, sick. So this can pull up to a skate shop with like a bunch of obstacles and we could like bring a barbecue and a little jam box and just like skate and make hot dogs for everybody and just hang out, have a good time, promote our brand. So that, or maybe like if someone hires us to do a birthday party. Oh we, yeah. We bring all the, the ramps in this. And this has been a little bit of talk about making this thing skatable too, right? Like a yeah, rail on the yeah. buffer and stuff. I want to do some kind of gimmicky things like make the, maybe a, the trailer hitch has the ability to like pop in a flat bar or a box. Maybe we line something on the front so we can like put a kicker up and do like wall rides or I don't know. We'll, we'll yeah. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Right, so here we are at the Home Depot. I mean, the amount of stuff you find behind businesses is crazy. Is there it's something in particular you're looking for back here? Okay, so right now, the reason we're here, um, so much like any quarter pipe or wedge or kicker or whatever it might be, you need ribs, right? You basically make a skeleton with them. So I was thinking, what's like a good way for somebody to come up with ribs without having to buy two by fours? Two by fours right now are crazy expensive. They used to be two fifty each. They're six dollars and fifty cents each. Yeah, so it's probably harder to find one of those in a dumpster these days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, there's a two by four right there. Or uh, two, two by six. Oh, so careful. Maybe not that hard. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, well, let's take that. All right. Step one. That's so, like that was not planned. <laughs> I honestly think people are gonna get mad by like how much luck we have. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, usually I'm budgeting time for when we do this. I'm like, oh, we might be looking for a very long time yeah. trying to find these things. There's a- Are you- Dude! <laughs> Look at that! Oh, oh my God. God! You can grab that one. Okay, I got it. Dude, what? That's so funny. I hope that we just like tore this whole parking lot and just slowly the exact ramp comes together. Then when we get to the end, there's like just an already built kicker. Yeah, hopefully we can find a thin enough ply that bends. If we find something thick, like a three quarter board or a five eighths, then maybe we make a wedge. Yeah, then it end up being a wedge. But if we can find something thinner, then yeah. that'll be cool. Like three eighths or skinnier, I think would be skinny enough to you know, turn into a kicker. Cause that is our main goal today is building a kicker, but 
We'll see. We're gonna find out how hard it is to really find. I'm gonna, I'm gonna peek in this dumpster. You are not gonna believe this. Look at all this free two by four that's just hanging out back on us. <laughs> like the amount of wood in here, there's like, uh, so you know what a dunnage stick is? It's, no, it's not. It's basically like the little piece of wood that they put under pallets. Oh, this, we use yeah. them too. Okay. Like, I like, knew that was what it was actually called. There's like 40 of them in here. Look at this. Uh, oh, no way. <laughs> all those. And then look over there. Two by sixes. Dude. We could make, we could like make a mini ramp with all this. So the video has changed. We're building a skate park. There's so many to choose from. Like there's these standard ones. And these are cool. They're like Oh, they're actually like wood they're too. Like inch and a half by two and a half or so. For some reason I thought some of them were made of like almost like a corky material, but that's just like straight up wood. Yeah, sometimes they're like plywood sandwiched together. Oh and then look, these are like uh like pressure treated ones. And these are just like pieces of wood that you can just like find at Home Depot's construction sites or are they more common at Home Depot's and, and Lowe's than a construction site? Do they have these at construction sites? Sometimes, yeah. So okay, sick. Uh, oftentimes, like, the construction site, they'll, they'll buy bunks of lumber, right? And this and is what they're for, is for bunks they, of lumber. And they use all their lumber, these are left on the bottom. Yeah. That's why there's so many here, because after everybody buys up all the wood, they're like, they have no use for these. They have hundreds upon thousands of them. Yeah. So they literally end up in the trash. So good. So what they're used for is to separate the different, like sections of wood so it's easy to get the forklift uh prongs in there i'm guessing right so it's easier to get like a grip under them is that what they're yeah, there for okay exactly. so yeah they're everywhere plus there's two by sixes and yeah i think i'm gonna kind of go in i'm gonna stock up a little bit i mean i don't blame you oh you're grabbing so much stuff these two by sixes like we just got those new pallet racks at the, sh the new shop yeah and um you have to put lumber like inside of them to create the shelves yeah these are perfect and they're like it's good wood so this might this video might have changed from how to build a kicker slash wedge to how to start a brand new uh ramp making company from zero dollars and zero cents here's another fun fact uh i did landscaping at my house one time i got that decomposed granite and they bring rock and granite and these things are called super sacks so that they're not just dumping it straight onto your property and I remember there was a $25 uh, like installment fee. So if you returned it, you got 25 bucks. So there's super sacks in here that are in the trash. So they're worth 25 bucks? Yeah, we could like go return these and get money. Oh, so you're learning a lot today. Man, this stuff, scoot over. Let me get in there. This, this is where I need to be. This is the dream. I wonder how many things in the world besides raccoons have been in a dumpster and thought to themselves, this is the dream. <laughs> If yeah. they came out, they'd be like, oh, you boys grabbing our trash? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, get it. <laughs> That's a thing of beauty. Look at that haul. <laughs> I could have taken more. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't want to be like a hoarder. <laughs> Leave some for people who live in the area to also do this. Yeah, this is great. All right, so we just need, um, so we have our ribs, obviously, plenty. Uh, and I think we could use this as our sides. Okay. To, um, to rib it up with. Um, so we need a, a wood that bends like a plywood, and then we also need uh, oh, a metal plate at the entry point, because if the wood just dies into the ground, you're gonna hit that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so before my phone ran out of storage, uh, we were talking about we needed metal plate, and uh, Corey was talking about how we might be able to grab a sign, like a metal sign from like a construction site, and I was talking about, I used to work at a steel plant called Sandusky Steels, and we would actually leave like full sheets of metal in our dumpster, like literally like four by eight sheets of metal that just got the holes punched wrong and we would just like throw them away. And that was like the correct thin amount or the correct thickness of a sheet to use for a threshold plate. So if you have like a steel plant around you, you might be able to find some metal there. Uh, and then he was talking about your mom used to do real estate. Yeah, she, or still, she still does. She's still a realtor, but uh, her signs were made out of like a thick plastic. Oh, see that sign that says available right there? Okay. Uh, has the four by four. It was like a little sign that mounted to the top and had her phone number. Oh. And so it was like nine inches by like two feet and it was a really thick plastic. And I used that for the entry of like a kicker that I made when I was like 12 years old. 
Um, and then she had some that were metal, but not very many. And they were really thin metal, so they bent a little bit. But, yeah. But it worked, you know, yeah. for a, a select amount of time. We, we do not condone, like, trying to steal anything. When we say get this for free, like, everything that we're doing here, we're actually, like, finding stuff in the dumpsters or stuff that's actually already been thrown away and disposed of. And we're trying to, uh, basically, one man's trash is another man's treasure is basically the way we're doing it. Whoa, flat bar. What's up with that flat bar? It's good. I don't know. Dang. It's got marks. Everything's so skatable in California. Okay, so here's an empty lot, and I see a sign behind that dumpster. Ooh. Oh. There's a... Uh... What kind of sign are we talking? Dude. Road closed to through tra- Oh, it already got a van sticker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is made to skate. Perfect. That's, do you have to cut it down? It's kind of big. Um, we could either cut it down or maybe it's just going to be our whole top layer. Like, what do you mean? My friend Joey has a skate construction company called Treducate uh -huh. and he has a ramp that's some type of like no parking tow zone or whatever. But oh, so this is like the top layer the you're saying. The whole top. The whole top is made out of this. Oh, so like I see what you're saying. Oh, so, so we got a kicker then. Yeah, like that. Um, and when we set it up, we'll still talk about how you can maybe build a kicker without blah, 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 blah. I think it's so funny that has a van sticker on it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, there's a push broom. I just bought a push broom. So I'm push a little broom. upset about that. Uh, this is VCR. What's going on here? This crap. Look at all that wood. Oh my God. Yeah. Bunch of four by fours. I just want to look at it. I don't feel like loading any of this stuff. I mean, we could make like a 200 pound kicker. That'd be so sick. The world's worst kicker. Whoa. What was this? Like some sort of stage? It looks like it was, um, when we got our CNC, it came on like a homemade pallet. That like a super of, pallet. Yeah, just like giant pieces of wood like this. What do we need now? We, oh, we just need like a bendable piece of wood. Yeah, and then I guess we can still keep our eyes peeled for some type of thicker ply for the sides. Okay. That, that one by 12, like that could work, but it is really thick and it did have a mean bow in it. So I, oh, yeah. we'll keep our eyes peeled for like maybe some three quarter or some five eighths. So even though everything is coming together pretty good today, we have actually been driving around a good bit. I don't know how much of that you're gonna actually see in this video. I think we've been out for about half an hour to 35, 45 minutes or something like that. Yeah, so this luckily, can take a little bit of time. Luckily, we're not going like far from our area, you know? Yeah, we're just kind of just driving around industrial area, which we kind of were already in. So we're, we're, we've been driving through alleys just trying to find any sort of scraps of wood. We did find some more PVC pipes, but we I think we're kind of good on this. <laughs> uh, so we're just kind of driving. I see some furniture. I just remember like when I lived uh, in Long Beach, like more the like, busy area, you know? Like everybody just puts stuff in the alleys and it always disappears. Like, yeah. People are always just like, oh cool, I'm gonna take it. Well, we don't need a couch, but I mean- <laughs> You're gonna take the wood? You take the wood. You think that's, it's, think it's flexible? It looks like it is. Oh, we don't want, do we want flexible or do we want, not? no, we do want flexible. We do want, yeah, cause we want that underneath the sign. Oh, okay. So we do want some support. That looks like it's kind of thick. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell if it's flexible or he's just really strong. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Oh, dude, that couch is disgusting. Yeah, no one's taking that anyways. No <laughs> dude, that couch is so bad. Like, you know, if you can tell, that is like rotting away. It's got like writing all over it. Yeah, we, that's, we're doing them a favor. Where are you going? Oh, I think I think he might be taking furniture for his house. What's that? We, I think we're getting more back at wood. I think this is where we're just gonna start getting all of our wood. Three quarter board. Do we need three quarter board? Uh, well, if that, if that one by twelve is too twisted or something, we might. Oh, that's right, yeah. that's right. So this could be a, a backup for our sides. Is it is it not broken or anything? No, it's fine. Look, more wood. So much wood, more ply. Oh, that shit looks aged though. Yeah, I mean, we can still work with it. Probably fine. We got enough stuff there, right? Do we need? Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're good. good. Oh yeah. Uh, no way. It's marble. No way. I mean, it's got that weird beveled edge, but like that could be cool. Make a little box. All right. 
Here's the hall. We have the road sign. Uh, some three eighths to go under the road sign. Three quarter for our sides, or we could do our sides with this uh, one by 12. And then I just grabbed a couple of these, uh, they're called dunnage sticks, um, and then these two by sixes. So I'll probably use these ones down below where the ramp's actually thinner, and then I'll probably use the two by sixes uh, as it gets taller. We'll, we'll probably only need like five or six ribs at most, so this, yeah. is, this is overkill, we don't need all this. Yeah. I need to figure out how wide it's gonna be, and since we're gonna use that as the entire kicker, um, that's gonna dictate how wide it is. It is one sign wide. Done. Exactly 24 inches. Uh, so that means we're going to basically use, just like we do our ramps, three quarters on the sides. Um, so our ribs are going to be one foot ten and a half. So I'm going to cut some one foot ten and a half ribs right now. I know this doesn't apply to everybody, but we have a, a stop block that literally is, says one, <laughs> one foot ten and a half. Oh, that's right, because that's like our actual kicker yeah, this size. Is, this is actually... Wait, two me. foot is the exact size that our kickers are? And yeah. that's the size of the sign? Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, we actually planted that sign. We uh, customly bought a exact size sign for our... Uh... <laughs> we should get some scratchers today, honestly. In honest, well, that's a good idea. That's how the video's gonna end. We're gonna get some scratchers. Yeah, we just make tons of money. <laughs> um, and then I'll probably just do two two by six ones. We gotta figure out the radius, right? Okay. So I think our kicker radius is like a 10 foot radius. So we could do that with like a big string or a 10 foot length of material and then scribe it. Um, but for the purposes of this being so short, <coughs> this sign is only like three feet long. You could probably just sort of do it by hand. like. Just gonna hold it with the, an eyeball bend that we like. Okay. Let's trace it. Okay. This is Cameron. He works at Keen Ramps. How's it going? Don't talk to my people. My people. Cameron, Cameron, you don't speak. All right. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna bend this, and basically, like, once I have it where I like it, just trace the bend. He's so strong. Let's see here. On the back. Uh, yeah. One. Out of curiosity, I want to see how this stacks up against one of our fingers. Like, you're eyeballing it versus one of ours? Yeah. So, like, here's a little template. <laughs> so, it's pretty close. That's pretty good. Super close. It's like... Slightly mellower. Slightly mellower, which is fine. I like the more mellow, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's so funny being surrounded by like all this nice brand new wood and then we're just like, <laughs> look at our trash. <laughs> I'm gonna use my cordless saw. To, I got a new saw that I'm excited about. Oh, I haven't seen a new saw. Let me say, new? Yeah. Oh, brand new. Dual batteries. Oh. The 5.0s, which are the beefy ones. You can like run this thing for like two or three hours. And it's also the, uh, the rear drive. Because some circular saws, they put the handle up above. So it's like, as you're pushing along, you don't really get that good of leverage. This one's nice because it's all in the back, right? So just pushing from behind. So like ergonomically, is a badass saw. Just a little bit past. And then, um, fun fact, circular saw or a skill saw can cut up to like a six foot radius. Anything tighter than that, your blade's gonna start to bind and kind of kick around. Mm. So this is probably, I know that ours is a 10 foot radius and this was slightly mellower. So this has this all day. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You can cut like seven foot, eight foot, and then all the way up to six foot radiuses. Oh, wow. Off. So they can get pretty sharp. Good to know. Yeah. So that it doesn't, it's one, so you can wally it, and then two, it's for stability. So the kind of bad thing about this is when you make a kicker that doesn't have that, and you hit it high speed, it kind of, it's more likely to move. Oh, I see like what you're saying. That wally cap keeps it a lot more stable. Mm. So I kind of want to, I want to cut it again with the wally cap. Well, couldn't you just reuse that piece as it, and then trace off of that? 
Yeah, I'm gonna use it to trace. Okay. So there's the thought. When you make these, make it the way that he's about to show you, because it's gonna make your kicker way sturdier. Plus, it'll make it wallyable. Which I'm actually gonna do a trick tutorial on how to wally using our kickers, anyways. So maybe build your own. And are you just gonna eyeball the? Yeah, I think so. It doesn't need to be the most perfect thing ever. That's true. Straight, straight edge that. it. Yeah, looks good to me. I feel like I'll make it more mellow, more favorable. It can be kind of fun. Yeah, okay. just get it like a little spine. And then again, just out of curiosity, I want to see how that compares to ours. A bit more mellow, that's for sure. Yeah, this one's slightly taller, and then yeah, the wally back is much more mellow, which I think will be fun. I do like our dimensions. I think the dimensions down for our kicker are pretty pristine when it comes to like launching you good. It's smaller, so it's like easier to move around. But to have your own kicker, this will definitely work. There she is. Yeah, it looks fun. Yeah, it does look pretty fun. And then the only thing that I screwed up, because I did that first one without the Wally cap, I did kind of like screw us on material. So rather than, I mean, I could just cut another triangle and then mend it. I feel like I'm just, I should just cut into our stash and just do the other side out of one. Yeah, of do it. Out. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so we're sort of cheating on this one for one tiny wallet cap mistake that Corey made. I would have never made this mistake because I would never do that. Yeah, yeah so we, we grabbed some wood from the uh, the back there that's uh, just like older wood that you said you don't, we don't use this kind of wood anymore. Yeah, this is, uh, we use A-grade, which is like smooth and sanded and pretty. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, this will just kind of like match the stuff that we found better. Okay, sounds good to me. So what's going on? Figuring out the uh, layout here for the ribs. So I'm gonna do a two by six on the top, uh, another two by six, just cause I have all that space. And then the dunnage sticks, which are like approximately, I don't know, two by threes or so. So I'm figuring out the spacing. So I got nine inches on center. Usually you want to shoot for eight, but this thing is going to be so compact and kind of, it's like kind of overbuilt for what it is. Yeah. So nine inches is fine. So we got nine inches there, nine inches there on center, and then nine inches there. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark these so I know where to drill them. Now I'm going to drill it, pre-drill through both of these at the same time. So that way you don't have to do this on both sides of it. You just lay one on top of the other, make them flush. So typically for pre-drill and screw holes, you want to use about an eighth inch bit because most screws are usually number eights or number tens. Um, they're just a little bit bigger than this. So this is like a really nice pre-drill, eighth inch. Always let the drill do the drilling. Because if you push it, not only are you kind of dulling your bit, but you, you risk it. the bottom blowing out. Yeah. So you want to just let it speed up all the way. Let it do the drilling. Bits last a lot longer. And it's good to uh, be mindful of your angle. You know, you don't want to be like this. You want that perpendicular to your surface. If you go even at the slightest angle and you have a hole in the bottom that's kind of off to the side and then you go to put the two by fours or the sticks or whatever you end up using as your ribs, it's going to be like, it's going to want to pull it a little cockeyed too. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark the faces just so I know exactly where my two by four is sitting. So he's just continuing that line from the top. And this little step can make this so much easier if you do this. Yeah, it just makes everything go together a lot more precise because if you mount, say you mount one rib here and the one on the other side is an eighth inch over and you do that three times, you got three eighths and then now the whole thing can be twisted. That mini, now this. Yeah, you build a whole mini ramp by yourself. Now you're building a free kicker. Just send that. <laughs> you're definitely putting that in. Send that. Now you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's your new thing. 
I don't know why I did that. I was all like tired and delirious and had all that adrenaline going from like the mini ramp build in an hour. And then he like did his outro on the video. And then I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and immediately I was like, I don't know why I did that. Oh, you're right. Dang. Oh yeah, that's right. You got to skate this I'll, thing. I'll practice on Adrian. All right, yeah. <laughs> Work your way up, right. Adrian to Travis to me. See how they line up all nice with these lines right there? These lines are a lifesaver. Yeah, this thing's like almost done. That's so crazy. And it's solid. That'd be funny if like after skating this, like I just love the specs. I'm like This is the new specs. All wrong. <laughs> what I was thinking is uh, I'm excited for this to go on top. Uh, because it already says free on it, so what a thumbnail that'll be. I didn't even like realize that till now. We have a big sheet of wood that says free, and this ramp's supposed to be free. So we want to try to get some of this bend out. How do you do that? Oh, you just this. manhandle it? You just be a brute about it? So when we put this sheeting on, we're going to have to keep that in mind. Okay, so now we put our free ply on. Oh, we're probably going to have to cut it, actually. So another fun fact about this, that is two foot wide. Now two foot wide is like a pretty common cut for wood, I guess, but the free thing was also two foot wide. Yeah, we all around scored. Well, the, my favorite part about this is our star employee is two feet tall, Adrian. So uh, who is actually two feet tall, like babies? <laughs> and Adrian. <laughs> Now, if you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't really know how to skate a kicker. I'm more of a wedge guy. Kicker ramps are kind of like launchy, and I'm not sure how they work. Lucky for you, I have a tutorial on how to skate kickers. There you go. I love the fact that there's a van sticker. I know I keep bringing that up. That just cracks me up. Oh, one thing I, like, foolishly didn't fully account for. Oh, you need... Yeah, it has to go past this to hit the ground. So, it's more of a mental thing having that strip. Oh yeah, so he didn't take into account that since we're not, we could add a threshold plate to the metal. <laughs> no. Uh, but he didn't take into account that this top sheet is actually also the threshold plate, the metal at the bottom. So that's why we have this at the top, the woods overhang. So if you do happen to get this, take that into account. Okay, I got an idea. I'm gonna make it look sleek. Paint this gray and then give the sides a fresh coat of gray and it'll all just tie in. So what are you eyeballing about every foot? Uh, no, I'm just going- Oh, with the studs. Just landing on the ribs. Oh, I gotcha. What hole. size bit are you using? Uh, I got a 316. So I got this countersinking bit. Very nice. And then to double check it, I'm just gonna get a screw. Kind of perfect. So my countersink is just slightly bigger. Nice. Just quick and dirty. That's the name of the game right now. Why we countersink perfectly flush. Flush. There go. So there's the piece for the Wally cap. So try to keep that in consideration when you're actually building it if you plan to have a Wally cap. Now you don't need to have a Wally cap, but I recommend it. I think it makes your ramp a lot sturdier. Uh, once again, we cheated. We grabbed a piece of scrap wood that we had um, and threw it on here. Old scrap wood. Yeah. So there she is. That's it. She's ready to rock and roll. Literally, you should do rock and roll on her. We do sell kickers that are to a much more professional spec than what we're showing you how to do now. Um, but we like doing these ramps for free just because we know not everyone can afford to actually purchase our ramps. And we do think that everyone should at least have access to the majority of the go-to ramps like uh, kickers and ledges and rails. So one by one, we're trying to rifle off just about any item that you could find in a skate park for free. Because we know that not everyone's not only blessed 
enough to be able to afford one of our ramps, but not everyone has a skate park in their neighborhood. I know I didn't have my first skate park within an hour drive of my house for the first, I don't know, five years of skateboarding. So yeah, this one's for you guys. So here we are, the training facility. I guess I'll grab my board too. Nice walk, man. Thank you. What do you think he's gonna do? Back three melon, front three indie, some arm bar stretches. Stiff, man. What do you mean you're stiff? You've been warming up all day. You built a mini ramp, a kicker. Whoa. You fully tried to ollie. That like gave me way more kick than I expected. Jeez. So you're gonna have to go over some stuff. Ooh, man, that thing's floaty. Oh, so nice. It's more of a banky. We made this thing slanted. I'm not impressed. You cleared her by so much. Yeah, you got. That thing looks like it would grind good. You get a board slide. Oh, you're bored out of my shot. Sorry, dude. I, I'm an amateur. He literally built a mini ramp by himself today. So this will be interesting. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Baker Maker! It's definitely gonna fall over. Not with my precise forward slides. <laughs> Not with your skill set. It'll definitely slide. Yeah, it's definitely gonna slide. You could probably crook it too. You might get caught in those holes. Yeah, let's see how board side goes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I thought crook, man. Crook? You think crook's next? Yeah, I think you got crook. Oh, that was it. Goodness. I don't think we need to do any more tricks. It obviously is skatable. Let's see how it does on distance. Oh, you want to do more ollies? Yeah. Okay, go go for it. Maybe it was 14 feet, actually. I'd have to Dylan look it up. Whitkin, who's one of the best skateboarders that I know, did like 14 foot eight at that cherry thing off of something very similar. So 14 foot. I'm not even close to Dylan. <laughs> well, that's look how crazy 20 bucks. 12 is. Okay, hold on. This is 12. Let's go 12 and a half. All right, if I clear 12 and a half within how many tries? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three tries, 12 and a half. Land it. You gotta land it. I get 20 bucks. 20 bucks. If I don't do it, I owe you 20. Okay, uh, we'll put my skateboard as a marker. $20 bet. You know, <laughs> this is a bet I was guaranteed to win, but he talked me down. He's quite the haggler. 16. That wasn't too far off. That was kind of close. Oh, look, he's starting way back there now. The other try, he wasn't even trying. He was just holding back. This one, he's going to feel how far he can really go. Ah. Penalty, you hit my board. You know, if this was an official Keen Ramps kicker, I, I'd say you would have done it first try. Yeah, I know those specs. Yeah, he knows those specs. Also, those are professionally built and to very, very specific dimensions. I went from being nervous to losing $20 to uh, confident that I'm about to make $20, so. Oh, he's even further back. He went past the fence. Okay. Oh! <laughs> I'll give you one more. Do you want it? Not really. <laughs> okay. Free kicker. Yep, that's how you get a free kicker. Um, if you want to check out some of the other stuff that we actually sell besides kicker amps, because we also do rails and boxes and mini ramps and quarter pipes and kind of unique obstacles like slappy bars and slappy curbs, just go to keenramps.com. The link will be down in the description. Uh, and until next time, I'm Dan, and this is the owner, Corey. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs>